page 77 chapter 8 going places about the author e r barton is a modern writer who lives in zurich and writes in english in the story going places barton explores the theme of adolescent fantasizing and hero worship notice these expressions in the text infer their meaning from the context incongruity prodigy shaft solitary elm arcade amber glow wolf wolf pangs of doubt when i leave sophie said coming home from school i'm going to have a boutique janzi linking arms with her along the street looked doubtful takes money so something like that i'll find it sophie said staring far down the street take you a long time to save that much well i'll be a manager then yes of course to begin with till i've got enough but anyway i know just how it's all going to look they wouldn't make you manager straight off sof i'll be like mary quant sophie said i'll be a natural they'll see it from the start I'll have the most amazing shop this city has ever seen. Jancy, knowing they were both earmarked for the biscuit factory, became melancholy. She wished Sophie wouldn't say these things. When they reached Sophie Street, Jancy said, "It's only a few months away now, Sophie. You really should be sensible." Page seventy-eight. They don't pay well for shop work, you know that. Your dad would never allow it. or an actress now there's real money in that yes and i could maybe have the boutique on the side actresses don't work full time do they anyway that or a fashion designer you know something a bit sophisticated and she turned in through the open street door leaving jancy standing in the rain if ever i come into money i'll buy a boutique ha huh. if ever you come into money If ever you come into money you'll buy us a blessed decent house to live in thank you very much Sophie's father was scooping shepherd's pie into his mouth as hard as he could go his plump face still grimy and sweat marked from the day She thinks money grows on trees don't she dad said little Derek hanging on the back of his father's chair their mother sighed Sophie watched her back stooped over the sink and wondered at the incongruity of the delicate bow which fastened her apron strings the delicate seeming bow and the crooked back the evening had already blackened in the windows and the small room was steamy from the stove and cluttered with the heavy breathing man in his vest at the table and the dirty washing piled up in the corner Sophie felt a tightening in her throat. She went to look for her brother Joff. He was kneeling on the floor in the next room, tinkering with a part of his motorcycle over some newspaper spread on the carpet. He was 3 years out of school, an apprentice mechanic, traveling traveling to his work each day to the far side of the city. He was almost grown up now. and she suspected areas of his life about which she knew nothing about which he never spoke he said little at all ever voluntarily words had to be prized out of him like stones out of the ground and she was jealous of his silence when he wasn't speaking it was as though he was away somewhere out there in the world in those places she had never been whether they were only the outlying districts of the city or places beyond in the surrounding country page number 79 whether they were only the outlying districts of the city or places beyond in the surrounding country who knew they attained a special fascination simply because they were unknown to her and remained out of her reach perhaps there were also people exotic interesting people of whom he never spoke it was possible though he was quiet and didn't make new friends easily 
she longed to know them. She wished she could be admitted more deeply into her brother's affections and that some day he might take her with him. Though their father forbade it and Joff had never expressed an opinion, she knew he thought her too young and she was impatient. She was conscious of a vast world out there waiting for her. and she knew instinctively that she would feel as at home there as in the city which had always been her home it expectantly awaited her arrival she saw herself riding there behind joff he wore new shining black leathers and she a yellow dress with a kind of cape that flew out behind there was the sound of applause as the world rose to greet them He sat frowning at the oily component he cradled in his hands as though it were a small dumb animal and he was willing it to speak I'm a Danny Cassie Sophie said he looked around abruptly where in the arcade funnily enough it's never true i did too you told dad she shook her head chastened at his unawareness that he was always the first to share her secrets i don't believe it there i was looking at the clothes in royce's window when someone came and stood beside me and i looked around and who should it be but danny cassy think as you read one where was it most likely that the two girls would find work after school Two, what were the options that Sophie was dreaming of? Why does Jancy discourage her from having such dreams? Page eighty. All right. What does he look like? Oh, come on! You know what he looks like. Close to? I mean, well, he has green eyes, gentle eyes, and he's not so tall as you'd think. She wondered if she should say about his teeth but decided against it. Their father had washed when he came in and his face and arms were shiny and pink and he smelled of soap. He switched on the television, tossed one of little Derek's shoes from his chair onto the sofa and sat down with a grunt Sophie met Danny Casey Joff said Sophie wriggled where she was sitting at the table her father turned his head on his thick neck to look at her his expression was one of disdain it's true Joff said i once knew a man who had known tom finney his father said reverently to the television but that was a long time ago you told us joff said casey might be that good some day better than that even he's the best if he keeps his head on his shoulders if they look after him properly a lot of distractions for a youngsters in the game these days he'll be all right he's with the best team in the country He is very young yet. He is older than I am. Too young really for the first team. You can't argue with that sort of ability. He is going to buy a shop, Sophie said from the table. Her father grimaced. Where did you hear that? He told me so. He muttered something inaudible and dragged himself round his chair. This another of your wild stories? She met him in the arcade, Joff said. and told him how it had been page 81 one of these days you're going to talk yourself into a load of trouble her father said aggressively joff knows it's true don't you joff he don't believe you though he'd like to the table lamp cast a nimble glow across her brother's bedroom wall and across the large poster of united's first team squad and the row of colored photographs beneath three of them of the young irish prodigy casey promise you'll tell no one sophie said nothing to tell is there 
promised Joff dad would murder me only if he thought it was true. Please, Joff. Christ, Sophie, you're still at school. Casey must have strings of girls. No, he doesn't. How could you know that? He jeered. He told me. That's how. As if anyone would tell a girl something like that? Yes, he did. He isn't like that. He's quiet. Not as quiet as all that, apparently. It was nothing like that, Chof. It was me spoke first. When I saw who it was, I said, Excuse me, but aren't you Danny Casey? And he looked sort of surprised. And he said, Yes, that's right. And I knew it must be him because he had the accent, you know, like when they interviewed him on the television. So I asked him for an autograph for little Derek. But neither of us had any paper or a pen. So then we just talked a bit about the clothes on Royce's window. He seemed lonely. After all, it's a long way from the west of Ireland. And then, just as he was going, he said if I would care to meet him next week, he would give me an autograph then. Of course, I said I would. Page number 81 Think as you read. 1. Why did Sophie wriggle when Joff told her father that she had met Danny Casey? 2. Does Joff believe what Sophie says about her meeting with Danny Casey? 3. Does her father believe her story? 4. How does Sophie include her brother Joff in her fantasy of her future? 5. Which country did Danny Casey play for? Page 82 Of course, I said I would. As if he'd ever show up. You do believe me now, don't you? He dragged his jacket, which was shiny and shapeless, from the back of the chair and pushed his arms into it. She wished he paid more attention to his appearance. She wished he paid more attention to his appearance. Wished he cared more about clothes. He was tall with a strong dark face. Handsome, she thought. It's like the unlikeliest thing I ever heard, he said. On Saturday, they made their weekly pilgrimage to watch United. Sophie and her father and little Derek went down near the goal. Joff, as always, went with his mates higher up. United won 2-0 and Casey drove in the second goal, a blend of innocence and Irish genius, going round the big two defenders on the edge of the penalty area, with her father screaming for him to pass and beating the hesitant goalkeeper and beating the hesitant goalkeeper from a dozen yards. Sophie glowed with pride. Afterwards, Joff was ecstatic. I wish he was an Englishman, someone said on the bus. Ireland will win the World Cup. Little Derek told his mother when Sophie brought him home. Her father was gone to the pub to celebrate. What's this you've been telling? Jancy said next week. About what? Your Joff told your Frank you met Danny Casey. This wasn't an inquisition, just Jancy being nosy. But Sophie was startled. Oh, that! Jancy frowned, sensing she was covering. Uh, yes, that? Well, yes, I did. You never did, Jancy exclaimed. Sophie glared at the ground. Damn that Joff! This was a Joff thing, not a Jancy thing. It was meant to be something special just between them. Something secret. It wasn't a Jancy kind of thing at all. Tell Gawky Jancy something like that and the whole neighbourhood would get to know it. Damn that Joff! Was nothing secret? Page 83 It's a secret meant to be. I'll keep a secret, Soph. You know that. I wasn't going to tell anyone. There will be a right old row if my dad gets to hear about it. Jancy blinked. A row? I'd have thought he'd be shuffed as anything. 
She realized then that Jansi didn't know about the date pit. Joff hadn't told about that. She breathed more easily. So Joff hadn't let her down after all. He believed in her. He believed in her after all. After all, some things might be sacred. It was just a little thing really. I asked him for an autograph. But we hadn't any paper or a pen, so it was no good. How much had Joff said? Jesus, I wish I'd have been there. Of course, my dad didn't want to believe it. You know what a misery he is. But the last thing I need is queues of people round our house asking him, "What's all this about Danny Casey? He'd murder me." And you know how my mum gets when there's a row? Janzi said, "Hushed. You can't trust me, Soph. You know that." Janzi said, "Janzi said, hushed. You can't trust me, Soph. You know that." After dark, she walked by the canal along a sheltered path lighted only by the glare of the lamps from the wharf across the water, and the unceasing drone of the city was muffled and distant. It was a place she had often played in when she was a child. There was a wooden bench beneath a solitary elm where lovers sometimes came. She sat down to wait. It was the perfect place. She had always thought so for a meeting of this kind. For those who wished not to be observed, she knew he would approve. For some while waiting, she imagined his coming. She watched along the canal, seeing him come out of the shadows, imagining her own consequent excitement. Not until some time had elapsed did she begin balancing against this the idea of his not coming page 84 here i sit she said to herself wishing danny would come wishing he would come and sensing the time passing i feel the pangs of doubt stirring inside me i watch for him but still there is no sign of him i remember joff saying he would never come and how none of them believed me when i told them I wonder what will I do what can I tell them now if he doesn't come but we know how it was Danny and me that's the main thing how can you help what people choose to believe but all the same it makes me despondent this knowing I'll never be able to show them they are wrong to doubt me she waited measuring in this way the changes taking place in her resignation was no sudden thing Now I have become sad she thought and it is a hard burden to carry the sadness sitting here waiting and knowing he will not come i can see the future and how i will have to live with this burden they of course will doubt me as they always doubted me but i will have to hold up my head remembering how it was already i envisage the slow walk home and joff's disappointed face when i tell him He didn't come, that Danny, and then he'll fly out and slam the door. But we know how it was. I shall tell myself, Danny and me. It is a hard thing. She climbed the crumbling steps to the street. Outside the pub, she passed her father's bicycle propped against the wall, and was glad. He would not be there when she got home. Excuse me, but aren't you Danny Casey? coming through the arcade she pictured him again outside roises he turns reddening slightly yes that's right i watch you every week with my dad and my brothers we think you're great oh well now that's very nice i wonder would you mind saying i wonder would you mind signing an autograph his eyes are on the same level as your own His nose is freckled and turns upwards slightly and when he smiles he does so shyly exposing teeth with gaps between his eyes are green and when he looks straight at you they seem to shimmer they seem gentle almost afraid like a gazelle's and you look away you let his eyes run over you a little and then you come back to find them slightly breathless and he says 
I don't seem to have a pen at all. Page 85 And he says, I don't seem to have a pen at all. You realize you haven't either. You realize you haven't either? My brothers will be very sorry, you say. And afterwards, you wait there alone in the arcade for a long while, standing where he stood, remembering the soft, melodious voice, the shimmer of green eyes, no taller than you, no bolder than you, the prodigy, the innocent genius, the great Danny Casey. And she saw it all again last Saturday, saw him ghost past the lumbering defenders, heard the 50,000 catch their breath as he hovered momentarily over the ball, and then the explosion of sound as he struck it crisply into the goal, the sudden thunderous eruption of the exultant approbation. Think as you read. 1. Why didn't Sophie want Jancy to know about her story with Danny? 2. Did Sophie really meet Danny Casey? 3. Which was the only occasion when she got to see Danny Casey in person? Understanding the text 1. Sophie and Jancy were classmates and friends. What were the differences between them that show up in the story? 2. How would you describe the character and temperament of Sophie's father? 3. Why did Sophie like her brother Joff more than any other person? From her perspective, what did he symbolize? 4. What socioeconomic background did Sophie belong to? What are the indicators of her family's financial status? Talking about the text. Discuss in pairs. 1. Sophie's dreams and disappointments are all in her mind. 2. It is natural for teenagers to have unrealistic dreams. What would you say are the benefits and disadvantages of such fantasizing? Page 86 Working with words Notice the following expressions. The highlighted words are not used in a literal sense. Explain what they mean. Words had to be priced out of him, like stones out of a ground. Sophie felt a tightening in her throat, if he keeps his head on his shoulders. On Saturday, they made their weekly pilgrimage to the United. She saw him ghost she saw him ghost past the lumbering defenders. Working with words. Notice the following expressions. The highlighted words are not used in a literal sense. Explain what they mean. Words had to be prized out of him, like stones out of a ground. Sophie felt a tightening in her throat. If he keeps his head on his shoulders. On Saturday, they made their weekly pilgrimage to the United. She saw him ghost past the lumbering defenders. Noticing form. Notice the highlighted words in the following sentences. 1. When I leave, Sophie said, coming home from school, I'm going to have a boutique. 2. Janzi, linking arms with her along the street, looked doubtful. 3. I'll find it, Sophie said. Staring far down the street. 4. Janzi, knowing they were both earmarked for the biscuit factory, became melancholy. 5. And she turned in through the open street door, leaving Janzi standing in the rain. When we add ing, when we add ing to a verb, we get the present participle form. The present participle form is generally used along with forms of be. Is, was, are, where, am to indicate 
the present continuous tense as in Sophie was coming home from school. We can use the present participle by itself without the helping verb when we wish to indicate that an action is happening at the same time as another. In example 1, Sophie said something. Said here is the main action. What Sophie was doing while she was saying is indicated by coming home from school. So, we get the information of two actions happening at the same time. We convey information in one sentence instead of two. Analyze the other examples in the same way. Pick out five other sentences from the story in which present participles are used in this sense. Thinking about language. Page number 87. Thinking about language. Notice these words in the story. Shaft, meaning delighted or very pleased. Nosy, meaning inquisitive. Gawky, meaning awkward, ungainly. These are words that are used in an informal way in colloquial speech. Make a list of 10 other words of this kind. Writing Think of a person who you would like to have as your role model. Write down the points to be discussed or questions to be asked if you were asked to interview that person on a television show. Things to do Look for other stories or movies where this theme of hero worship and fantasizing about film or sports icons finds a place. About the unit Theme Adolescent hero worship and fantasizing Sub-theme Relationships Family Friends Comprehension Inferential comprehension Talking about the text Discussion on a subject of immediate relevance to the life of school leavers. Working with words, metaphorical expressions, noticing form. Focus on the use of present participles to indicate simultaneity of action. Thinking about language, colloquial expressions, teenage slang. Things to do. Extension activity relating to other stories or films any language. Relating to other stories or films any language.